Hello and welcome to the next module for the Aldus Academy which is the uh, online training facility for Aldus Systems. Today we're going to be talking about the visual int uh, range of uh, IP surveillance uh, cameras. Um, this is a fairly unique solution um, in terms of moving forwards with um, IP cameras to the next level which um, I hope you'll enjoy this module. Quick history of um, surveillance uh, and CCTV technology was really introduced firstly in uh, back in the 1940s, uh, originally for uh, recording the launch of V2 rockets and commercially got deployed back in the 60s um, for primarily for shoplifting to prevent and try and reduce the amount of shoplifting going on. And then since the 70s, really. Um, the camera technology has not really moved on a huge amount, but um, technology has evolved a lot since then, allowing us to do what we can do now, which you'll, you'll find about on this uh, in this module. Uh, typical um, analog cameras um, have been somewhat limited in their quality of video, and this is a typical screenshot from a uh, what we call standard definition uh, analog CCTV camera. With the power of um, IP cameras um, and modern technology, we can now do 1080p HD uh, surveillance cameras, which, as you can see from this image here, has a dramatically uh, different uh, view, both in terms of um, how much can be captured within the um, within the camera uh, and the quality. Just that you can see how close and how detailed uh, some of the aspects of uh, of, of this image is. And you know, if we <laughs> compare uh, the old analog cameras to what we can do now with uh, with IP HD cameras, um, it's it's substantially different. And one of the not one of the really good things with the visual int range is the cameras have native 16 by 9 lenses, so you do have a proper wide uh, wide screen view, rather than um, beware of some of the cheaper cameras that have 4 by 3 lenses, which then try and stretch the image to. Uh, to provide you with a, a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. Um, so this uh, certainly demonstrates nicely how the uh, quality we can achieve is substantially better than before. Obviously um, uh, today's computing technology allows us to do more than just improving the quality of the images um, and that's where visual Int really stands out from the rest. Um, each visual int camera has an onboard microprocessor which is actually doing continual video analytics. It's monitoring the video image permanently, um, doing something that we call video analytics or VCA is video content analysis. So it's monitoring the video and uh, understanding what's going on, which um, is that enables, enables you to do some very powerful things. Just take a look at. Um, this video here on the left hand side we can see a conventional CCTV type camera doing fairly conventional motion detection. So here you can see the white uh, cells are clearly indicating where the, where the, uh, the shall we say, the uh, lower spec camera is identifying movements from the trees. On the right hand camera we have a visual int intelligent camera where it's actually picking up some far, far more useful information. So the trees moving around are, are ignored, um, but every now and then you'll see um, a little yellow box as one appeared um, over in the middle here, um, and every now and then you'll see something down here where the camera is actually identifying a person, which is really more what surveillance systems are really designed for and what a surveillance system is really more useful. So even behind that tree there uh, you can barely make out the person with the naked eye but the camera has picked out enough of an individual to be able to identify that there actually is a person uh, moving around um, within, the, uh, within the camera's view. So this is um, far more useful to us when it comes to identifying and triggering things and now you can see clearly this gentleman here is walking up uh, through uh, the image and there's clearly a yellow rectangle around him um, and there's this yellow trail showing where he's been. Um, so far more useful 
uh, which um, which is where you can really see the power of what the visual in cameras can do. Oh, and there's a motorcyclist and another person walking past there. So how does it do that? Um, first thing the camera has to do is stabilize the image. Um, apologies for the jerky images here. This is a fairly large video file that my uh, computer is struggling to actually render. Uh, but you'll see here um, this, if you watch this curb on this side here, it's moving around quite a lot, and the, that could be because the camera is on a pole that's that's moving somewhat in the wind, perhaps. Whereas this image over here, the curb is not moving at all. Um, the camera has basically stabilised the image um, so that um, we don't uh, see. Uh, movement in the background. Uh, another image here, example, you can see this camera perhaps high up on a pole is, is moving around the background where this has been stabilized uh, within the software of the cameras because it's important for the background to stay still so the camera can separate the background and the foreground uh, from the image. So that's all done in software. Um, the software on board is uh, using its internal algorithms to, to stabilize the image even if the camera is experiencing some level of um, movement as a result of um, the, the pole it's attached to is being moved slightly in the wind. So that's important because what the camera does is it is basically understanding the difference between the background and the foreground of the image that it's looking at. Um, and you can see basically here that the, the algorithm uh, creates a histogram of the background pixels of the image and understands the background so that when new objects appear that require the uh, analytics to track um, they can clearly be seen as foreground images uh, objects um, which then can be separated and tracked and then we can do useful things with it so um, within the algorithm, this is kind of a, an idea of, of how the algorithm works, that um, you can see these people here, and indeed that bag are deemed foreground objects and or blobs in this uh, particular context, um, and that's separated from, from the background. Um, and that's how we can track them and move them and, and follow them around and see and indeed count uh, and do useful things like that. When an object is detected, um, the camera draws this uh, yellow uh, box around the object, be it a car or a person, uh, and it also leaves this trail um, on the image as well, so we can see where the object has been um, and where it's going. So that actually is very useful for some of the more advanced analytical rules that we can set up. Um, and this image here is, is showing an example of where we've drawn a zone on the actual camera. Uh, this red zone here um, and we're interested in when objects perhaps enter or exit or loiter within that red zone so here you can see the the box around the car is red rather than yellow because it's it's it's, it's entered this particular zone um, and that might then generate an alert or an event um, send it to a control system create an email um, so that you can actually then identify if something or someone enters an area that um, they shouldn't do or you want to be notified if they do. So there are various object classifications. Um, uh, obviously people is the key thing, uh, but people, animals, cars, trucks can all be identified within the algorithm uh, of the cameras um, and, um, and then these various events and rules can be configured accordingly. But then also um, uh, you can create virtual trip wires um, or zones. So here you can see on this image around, if you follow my mouse here, there's a zone being created um, in this area here. At the back of this property there's also a red zone along the path and there's a green zone along the grass. Um, so anyone entering any or exiting uh, any of these uh, or loitering any in any of these zones can trigger a particular event. And there's also this blue line here is what we call a virtual trip wire, where if somebody crosses that trip wire, and we can even put direction um, algorithms on there as well, so that if they cross that trip wire in a certain direction, that might trigger an event as well. So it's the combination of um, the object classification and these various and setting up zones and trip wires that enable 
what really brings the magic uh, of these cameras um, to life where you can then have events uh, occurring when uh, objects enter, exit, loiter uh, within, a, uh, within a zone or, or across a tripwire. This video here again. Apologies for the the jerky nature of the video. It's uh, again, it's down to my uh, my my PC's ability to render the video. But the idea here is, you can see that um, there's a red zone created here where these rather nice sports cars are parked, and basically we want to know if somebody enters the zone. Um, so here you can see this man here has been identified uh, as an object and classified, and there's a, a yellow box around him. Uh, he's not in the in the red zone, so he's not causing any triggers or any events. Whereas um, there is a person uh, behind the um, the uh, boot of this car, um, and that is causing a red um, uh, square around him, and that might cause a trigger. So the cameras are intelligent enough that even if the person's completely obscured, we know they're there. We saw them walk up. We saw them approach. He would have been yellow as he approached the car and then he goes red as he enters the red zone uh, and even when he's completely out of sight we know he can't vanish um, so we maintain the fact that he, there's a presence there uh, until he exits the zone so this may have triggered an event which may have turned a screen on in the office um, and put it on the right input so that you can view the camera um, as a result of someone entering that zone so um, very uh, uh, many applications that uh, that you could apply uh, these algorithms to. Here's another example, um, and actually demonstrating in poor visible conditions because the rain is a red zone here, and we've picked up a person who's yellow at the moment, and as they enter the uh, the, the the zone, they've gone red, um, and we've also got a counter on here which is indicated we found we've noticed one person's walked through this uh, particular zone of interest um, and it's been logged down here on the um, uh, at the bottom of the screen that one person has been detected and then a second person's entered and entered the uh, exited the red zone um, and they'll go back to uh, to yellow once they've um, uh, left the uh, the hot zone as it were so not so we're showing here tracking of people in poor visibility, um, identifying when they've entered a certain zone, and actually counting how many people um, enter these zones. Oh, and there goes a, there goes a cyclist uh, whizzing through. Um, so you can see um, that uh, it's quite a quite a powerful uh, capability. This one's interesting. Um, we've got a, a person and a dog. Um, and the uh, advanced analytics applied to this camera has identified that this is a dog and you've even got the speed at which the dog's traveling and the, the dimensions of the individual of the dog and the person and of course we've flagged the fact they've gone through a red zone um, so that we've uh, we may count um, how many people and that's all being tracked um, down at the bottom here uh, in this event log uh, for later retrieval if you want to pull out some statistics so uh, very uh, very impressive let's imagine uh, from a security application we wanted to um, identify if an object had been abandoned obviously airports and, and other such uh, secure environments um, are very hot on bags being left so because the camera understands the background, understands what the background scene looks like, you can see these two gentlemen have, have, uh, are actually, um, the gentleman on the right has abandoned a bag, or about to abandon a bag, um, and uh, as they walk away, the uh, advanced analytics uh, will, after a certain preset amount of time that's, that's configurable, has identified that there's a bag been left there and it's drawn a red square around it um, and that could also have triggered an event or sent an email um, which could then trigger a security guard or someone to go and uh, investigate that and, uh, and and find out more about what's going on there. Uh, equally we can do the opposite, um, we can actually identify when an object is removed, you'll notice there's a bicycle there that's um, lent up against that um, bus uh, shelter um, and we want to track if that's removed and you can see an individual has picked up the bicycle and wheeled it away and again after a, a configurable preset amount of time um, we can then trigger an event 
based on the fact that that object has been removed uh, from that particular uh, environment or, or that particular scene. Um, so now you can see a red square has appeared um, and that could also, as I say, trigger, an, trigger a, an event or an email or whatever we want um, to notify the appropriate person that that has been removed. Counters are also, um, uh, we've kind of seen a couple of examples of that, but here we can see an example of uh, a traffic area, um, an intersection where there's a, it's been a green zone has been created on the camera, and we want to count um, how many uh, cars or, or vehicles or objects, which are cars in this case, are, are in that area at any one time. Um, you can see there's four cars uh, in the area. Um, or over here with a different example where we've got um, just this area here and maybe we're counting how many cars pass, uh, enter and exit um, that particular red zone. So all sorts of various useful applications um, for uh, traffic monitoring purposes which these cameras can be used for um, automating what typically has been a manual task where somebody with a clipboard is stood there counting things and trying to capture data. Uh, again, a, a traffic example here, you can see that um, there's two virtual trip wires here and they're counting the vehicles um, that have a particular direction. So um, uh, the on the left hand side, it's, it's cars moving up and the right hand side cars moving down. So these cars are being counted, which would be useful for certain uh, traffic analysis uh, applications for county councils and, 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 and planning uh, officers. Um, over here, this is a more of a retail example where perhaps for marketing purposes, the, the retail chain wants to understand people flow through the store and how people move through the store to improve the store layout and, and where to put their, um, their, their marketing uh, assets. Um, so here you can, you can see we have a number of virtual trip wires and as people cross through the trip wires in different directions, um, then the counters are incrementing accordingly to uh, be able to capture that information which can be exported into Excel or or any form so that um, that can be made available to the right people uh, in the format that they need. The um, enter and exit uh, is one of the rules on the algorithm that you can program and how that works is, be is by uh, looking at the trail. So I, I mentioned earlier that this red square is drawn around the object and is followed uh, and maintains around the object as it moves but we also leave a little trail um, along the back of that object to show uh, where that car has come from or that, that object has come from um, so um, the, an example of um, an, an entering the zone rule is where that trail crosses um, the edge from the outside to the inside of the blue zone in this case and an exit rule is where that trail um, does exactly that it, it exits from the blue zone to outside the blue zone so that way um, we can then trigger an entry rule and an exit rule if we so choose Uh, this um, this example here is on speed um, and a more advanced rule whereby we can um, we can basically trigger an event on when the trail crosses the zone which in this case is this blue zone here um, basically within a configured speed so we might say that someone crossing that zone below 20 kilometers an hour does not trigger the event but if you tr cross that zone uh, in exceeding 20 kilometers an hour then you trigger the event so uh, again very clever stuff here we have um, a virtual trip wire here and we've also configured a certain angle um, and then looking at this red trail um, if the object crosses over there at an angle within here to here then um, that triggers the event uh, if it's at a more acute angle then it's outside this boundary and the event is not triggered so that's obviously all uh, fully configurable as well uh, the stopped rule um, is where um, the trail stops anywhere inside the zone, the blue zone in this case, for a configurable amount of time. So that way you can then detect if something stops within that particular zone that you've set up. 
Um, sim very similar is the loitering rule, uh, which again is where the trail stops uh, and moves or just moves anywhere inside the zone for a configured amount of time. So if someone, if in example there, maybe you want to tra trap if someone loiters in front of your house on, on the curb because they're perhaps casing the joint. If someone's, you know, even if they're sort of slowly moving backwards and forwards, they're loitering within that zone. That might then trigger an event which might send you an email, which might then trigger you to go back and look at the recorded footage um, after the event so you can see why someone was loitering outside your property um, uh, for an extended period of time. This is one of my favourite um, examples of the to demonstrate the power of the vigilant range of cameras. This is uh, one of the PTZ cameras. Um, and it's demonstrating the auto tracking capability. Uh, PTZs are traditionally not very useful unless you have a full-time security guard operating a joystick um, to make it useful. Uh, with these PTZs they are fully automatically tracking the individual. So this camera has picked up this man um, and um, is automatically now zooming in um, and tracking his movement. Um, it'll try and zoom in to get the best possible image uh, and that's quite nice because you can then get a close-up of the individual's face and it'll follow them around for a pre-configured amount of time or until he ends up going out of camera shot um, which as I said it really does make unmanned PTZ cameras um, viable um, in, a, in both commercial or residential applications whereas as I said Typically, PTZs really are only useful when you have a, a, a manned security desk um, monitoring the cameras and, and, and operating a joystick. But this is all happening fully automatically. As you can see, we're following the uh, following the uh, the gentleman as he moves across the car park, um, and when he eventually goes out of sight, then we'll see uh, that the camera will then automatically track back to. Um, to the home position um, which will be a zoomed back wide angle view ready to pick up the next uh, ready to pick up the next person which is uh, uh, very powerful this uh, this one here is um, the thermal camera um, imagine you have a property which backs onto some huge fields and open area and you're concerned from a security point of view of someone entering your property uh, it can cost thousands to put external measures in with light beam sensors and external PIRs and the like. Well, this thermal camera is a simple one camera on the back of the house. Uh, and these, these people up here on the horizon, they're probably over a kilometre away. Uh, it's detected a person walking along this path and these people way up here on the horizon. Uh, which, you know, may well be outside your property boundary um, so you may then have a virtual tripwire put in place or a zone that when someone enters into that zone it triggers an event which then might turn some lights on send you an email which you can then go back and look at the recorded footage and find out who that was that was entering your your property obviously the thermal camera um, will work in in, in total darkness um, which uh, which is um, obviously quite a powerful capability so um, the, the cameras uh, do come uh, with uh, the basic uh, presence uh, detection uh, capabilities um, so that they can identify objects um, and trigger events uh, via IP or uh, emails or a number of things. And then there are add-on software licenses you can add to the cameras to be able to do some of the amazing things that you've seen uh, during this, um, this training uh, module. Um, the professional license pretty well gives you most things. Uh, the surveillance license is one of the most popular ones which um, gives you a lot of functionality um, that we talked about in terms of direction and, and stopping and loitering detection, entry exit, um, all those sorts of things. Um, didn't really mention camera tampering, that's also quite a, a useful feature that um, imagine someone grabs a, a scaffold pole and bashes the camera to push it out of the way so it's not looking where it needs to be looking so they can do something inappropriate um, then because the scene has changed drastically that can generate a tamper alert 
um, which then might send an email to someone or a security guard or pop the camera up on a screen or something um, to let them know that this camera has been tampered with which is obviously pretty serious and, and, and action can be taken so that's um, that's a very useful feature um, and there are subsets of all of these features in these various different packages depending on um, whether you're just looking for access control or just counting purposes um, or, uh, or different subsets of the various features but I think the, uh, the surveillance package is the most common one that gives you a lot of the functionality uh, as, as part of that software license. The tracking um, the uh, auto tracking only applies to the uh, PTZ cameras clearly So all sorts of possibilities. Um, once an event has been detected, um, perhaps integration with the building management or security system uh, or the home automation system if it's a more residential environment, contact closures um, could integrate with an alarm system to then trigger an alarm to go off, um, alert sent to smartphones, video response centers, email notifications, um, huge amount of potential huge amount of things that can be done and uh, and obviously reducing the amount of false alerts that uh, perhaps less intelligent cameras um, would um, uh, would have uh, at the moment we have lots of integration um, on the residential side with control for Crestron Savant bitwise controls all of these control systems we can do various things both in terms of sending events to them uh, to trigger automation tasks obviously we can also send the video streams from the cameras to the various touch screens of these control systems and um, the um, visual in NVR um, HDMI out can also be controlled via these control systems so you can go full screen on camera one or camera two or a quad screen or, or something of that nature um, and there's more control system integration planned uh, moving forwards the range of cameras um, is quite a nice range of cameras that um, will uh, pretty well cater for most needs um, ranging from very small discrete internal dome cameras um, these various bullet thermal camera these cameras here are infrared night vision cameras um, dome cameras that's a very popular one again with infrared night vision the fisheye camera is great for putting in the ceiling in a perhaps more office environment where you want to get a full 360 degree view of the entire office these guys here are very interesting they are they're not PTZs but they are motorized with 16 preset positions and uh, the control system can move them between those preset con uh, positions so with 16 positions you can pretty well cover every area so there is pretty well as good as um, sort of uh, pan tilt type functionality uh, an indoor one here recesses right up into the ceiling so all you see is the dome and the bezel um, or there's an outdoor one um, and then these are the full PTZ cameras. This one here is 720p 12 times optical zoom, and this is the 1080p 20 times optical zoom cameras. Again, they can be recessed into the soffit with a nice bezel. Um, equally, this one can be recessed into a soffit, which is great for interior designers and architects that don't want to see cameras. You can recess that into a soffit, and all you see is the glass dome. Um, and I should mention this chappy here as well, which is um, uh, also enables Wi-Fi. Um, it's got a built-in PIR, um, so you could actually, where you've got cabling to a PIR for security purposes, you could use that cabling to power um, and send the PIR signal back to the alarm system, and then the camera can talk um, to the rest of the network over Wi-Fi. So you could actually replace security PIRs with this camera which still does the PIR function and gives you a camera as well using the same cabling infrastructure so quite a range of cameras uh, and to complement the cameras is the visual in range of uh, network video recorders the um, there uh, there are two ranges of uh, D uh, NVRs there's the line and the commercial the line range is really more meant for domestic and small commercial applications then there's the commercial uh, platform which is meant for big commercial operations um, the both platforms obviously are very uh, intuitive user interfaces um, here we can see the line NVR where we add all of our cameras um, this is obviously the uh, configuration page 
um, where you add all your cameras and you can specify and set up all your um, sort of sensitivity of, and, and zones and the like. Um, and obviously when you're looking at the NVR full screen, you don't have any any of this sort of stuff. It's uh, You have full screen for the cameras on particular camera or quad screens or 3x3. Three three. Uh, we, um, we, we offer the NVRs in four channel uh, 8 channel, 16 channel and 32 channel with off the shelf hardware but pretty well any size uh, system can be uh, configured uh, with custom hardware. We also, um, a lot of these cameras are PoE um, so you've just got to run a single Cat5 to the cameras for the data and power um, so a PoE switch is quite important. Um, uh, Visualin also offer 4 and 8 port PoE switches um, with some quite impressive distance capabilities. Um, most PoE switches are good for 90 meters. Um, the higher powered PoE switches that Visualin offer are good for 150 meters. And if you add additional power uh, halfway along, you can drive up to 300 meters um, on the uh, on the PoE, and they even have PoE splitters where a single Cat5 can go into a splitter and split it into service two cameras. So that's uh, that's uh, quite a nice uh, add-on. Uh, Visualin also offers something called the Virtual Technician, uh, which is quite nice. Um, you can actually simply uh, physically install the cameras and um, and the NVR, um, and then actually book a Visualint uh, engineer at a certain time to come in and configure the cameras to give them optimum settings for their sort of day-night configuration and and provided you know you know what you want the cameras to do they can set up the zones the uh, virtual trip wires and the events uh, into whatever it is you want it to do um, that is a paid for service um, but um, something I'd recommend for at least for your first installation so you've got the sort of backup and support that you need um, and by, by all means you know that could be used on each each occasion um, so specify on a, on a form exactly what you want the system to do, do the physical installation and allow the virtual technician to set the system up for you. So we have full HD 1080p images. Um, the, the intelligence um, is standard on every camera um, with the basic uh, presence detection and then you can buy the licenses to add more functionality. Um, the, you know the, these cameras um, uh, are not, you know, ridiculously expensive. They'll be slightly on on the higher price point than than obviously the cheaper end of the market. Uh, but for the functionality you can get out of these cameras, and, and some of the there are some cost savings in terms of you know third party equipment that you might need to achieve. Uh, what I'll call prowl detection from a security point of view. Um, this could actually work out a cheaper solution than fitting external light beam detectors and external PIRs and the groundworks associated with it and will probably have less false triggers. Uh, this is a, it's a dealer only uh, um, distribution channel um, through ourselves um, so it's only available to professional installation companies. It's not pimped out all over the internet um, so uh, it's a good um, it's a good brand to be offering your customers um, and you've got that unique integration with control systems and building automation systems and the virtual technician support. The tech support is fantastic. Um, obviously we, we offer technical support as first line and then we can pull in on the uh, technical support guys from Vigilant in the US uh, as we need to. So that's the uh, Vigilant website and of course um, the Aldous Systems website. Um, I hope you found this useful. Please contact us. Contact details are on our website. Um, if you want any uh, any help um, or specking out systems, further information, uh, please, uh, or you want to come to our office for a demonstration of some of the capabilities, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I, uh, our phone number is 01296 719582 and email is sales at aldersystems.co.uk. Thank you very much for listening and um, please tune in soon to another training module at the Alders Academy. Thank you.